Welcome back to another episode of CHP. CHP, I can't talk this morning. Sports with Kenny to my left and Anthony, that is myself. Uh, great to all have you back. We are uh, the early week of February, or a week in February, a week in a day, as we can record this, the 8th of February, 2022. We have the Super Bowl in six days. And we have the Winter Olympics that have started. Uh, let's let's actually start there with the Winter Olympics. Kenny, have you been able to watch any of the Winter Olympics? Are you into the Winter Olympics? What are your thoughts after a few days of it? Um, so I, I had a busy weekend, so I wasn't able to really watch too much. Uh, I did see some of the uh, cross-country skiing, which is very... I mean, it's a tough sport. <laughs> let's be honest. That is a tough sport. Um, I know there was a bunch of ice skating last night, but I wasn't able to watch it. I think the American guy did really well. I think he already had the highest score like ever in a short program know. or something. Um, I'll, I'll be, yeah, I'll, I'll respond in a minute. I'm, I mean, I'm definitely going to check out the, the snowboarding, the jumping stuff. I'm sure that'll be on soon. I don't, I don't think I missed any of that. Maybe. I, I don't know what exactly happened this weekend, but I'll be checking out. Yeah, I don't think yeah, anything sure. happened yet. I feel like the Olympics starts slow and then it like gets into the good stuff like a weekend. <laughs> um, so yeah, I haven't really seen too much, but I did watch that and uh, it's just, those guys are amazing athletes. They really are. It, it's, that is a tough sport. I'm like, why don't they just go downhill? It'd be much easier. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's been a weird for me watching so far because usually, you know, especially with the summer games, I get so into them. Yeah, and I I found myself having trouble getting into this Winter Olympics, and I'm I'm not entirely sure why. I, I yeah, maybe a part of it's like I'm having trouble getting into the ice skating, and they they t- seem they want to show they tend to I shouldn't say they want they tend to show that more in, in prime time because obviously that's a very popular sport. Yeah, in it's the like US, so. it's like the gymnastics, right? It's very similar. Yeah. It's like the winter version of gymnastics. Yeah, and it's just you know the the athletes are phenomenal and. You know, I, I like the, I like the athletic portion of it. I'm just having trouble getting into the artistry, I guess, for it this year, which is kind of weird for me, uh, being having been an artist. Uh, you know, so I like the jumps. I like when they if they do the partners and they're doing the lifts and the holds because it's very you know physically impressive. Yeah. And you know, there's a lot of technique that goes into it. But you know, like I, I guess I'm just having trouble with the, like it's it's a slower sport. Um, and it's less, I think the effort's less obvious than something like a cross country skiing, which I watched most. I, I somehow missed the end. I was flipping back and forth, I think, between that and something else, and I missed the end. Um, but I watched a, lo- a good chunk of the gr- cross country stuff. And it's just, I mean, the effort is so apparent. Um, and it's, it's maybe because it translates a bit more into what your, your everyday life. N- not many of us are out figure skating. Uh, yeah, Much such a specific specific sport. You basically have to live in an ice arena to be good at that sport. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I mean, there is so obviously you can, you can appreciate how much athleticism goes into it, and you know, obviously leaping and doing four spins. It, yeah, you know, it's incredible. Like, like, obviously, you can understand how difficult that is to some extent, but just like the effort of, like, I don't, I don't personally know, like, how hard is it to skate for two minutes. Like yeah, you know, the endurance and throwing part, yeah. in some jumps in there. Like, how tired are you by the end? I'm, I'm guessing you're pretty toasted. Um, like, I know you're pretty toasted, but like, I, I, you know, you don't have that sort of. I guess more to me, it's like I know. Okay, if you made me cross country ski in the snow, not that I've ever really cross. Oh, I, I used to have cross country skis. That I just messed around with them in the front yard, you know. But like, just doing like being in snow for more than two minutes trying to move around is hard. Right? Yeah, so, on skis. Yeah. Yeah, on ski, even, you know, or just skis or no skis, just moving around in snow for two minutes is going to be hard. So doing it for, I don't know, it was a 30 kilometers they had to go. It just sounds miserable, right? And they have bit that one big uphill that was brutal. So yeah. <clears throat> having trouble getting into it, I, I do enjoy, I've been enjoying the downhill. Um, So this, this had me think of a question, I think, and this applies to, to a lot of the Olymp- Winter Olympic stuff. Like, especially something like, you know, last night there was men's super G, right? So it's basically as fast as you can go down a hill that is extremely steep. Mm-hmm. Um, takes like a minute and 20, 10 seconds, basically. And comparing that to something like cross-country skiing, 
right? And and you know what which sport do you prefer? Because on the one hand, like the super G, you have this huge element of danger, right? I think this is extremely true in, in most of the Olympic sports, where I think it's part of the inherent value is the inherent danger of what they're doing. Like if you're doing half pipe with skis or a snowboard, like there's the danger that you crack your skull on the lip or something like yeah. that. Or, you know, Break your back. Very, yeah. <laughs> extremely dangerous. Um, you know, track and field, for example, if you're running a 400 meters, it, the, the draw to a 400 or a 200 or 100 isn't the danger, right? You're, they're not, there's not really any, any danger there. It's uh, the speed the more than anything. Yeah, exactly. It's just the sheer athleticism and impressiveness of the speed. Mm-hmm. You know, where, and then you have something like downhill where it's like, oh my gosh, like these guys are going 70 miles an hour down like a sheer cliff face. Like how, you know, it's, it's so dangerous. You know, and if they mess up once, they're out of the competition. Like we saw this with Michaela Schifrin, and it was in the slalom for her, you know, where she missed, you know, the turn up at the top of the hill, and she, you're out, right? You, you have lost, right? There's no it's, do-overs. It's very, so, it's very final, the Olympics. <laughs> yeah, well, well, it's, well, it's weird. It's final for some sports. Yeah. And then something like the cross-country skiing, like, I think this year's winner fell at the beginning, and I know the last Olympics winner fell at the beginning and still won the race. Yeah, so you have sports with that, like that, where you can fall and win the race, and you have other sports where you fall and you're you're immediately you're just done. disqualified. Yeah, you're done. Yeah, like you I. Know, so what are your thoughts? I mean, you do you have a preference for which ones you like more? Um, I I definitely like the 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 high risk ones more. Um, just due to the fascination of it, um, fascinated. It's like the Moto X guys, the big way surfer guys. Like, they're. I mean. It's just stuff I would never do, so I'm fascinated by it. But I really appreciated the effort and endurance of that cross country race. I mean, that was, I think it was what 18 miles or something like that ish. 18. 30k. So whatever. I think yeah, that's that is. about 18. Yeah. I mean, it's. I don't like. I don't like biking that far sometimes, and these guys are like, basically walking uphill and downhill on skis through that, right? So it's a tough. That's a grind. That's a, that's a, uh, I don't know. It, it was impressive to see. It, it was cool to see too, how they were finding certain tracks in the snow to like make it a little easier. And, but man, it, 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 I can't imagine what that feels like for that long of a distance. You know, I, I have a skier, I got my house, right? So I, I I've yeah. done some of that stuff. And when you go skiing, when you get to flatlands, you have to basically cross country ski to move yourself around. That's the hardest part, right? <laughs> Getting to the lift or, you know, just all that part of it. And it's probably only like 50 yards and, and they're doing 18 miles. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, it, it's impressive, but I, I'm definitely drawn to the, the high, high risk type thing. I just, those people are crazy to me, but I, I think they're insane athletes. I think they're crazy talented people. Um, and yeah, I love the downhills. I did miss that last night, but I, I love the, the speed of the downhill. It's again, just, just pure all to me of just watching something like that. It's, it's so fascinating. Yeah, no, I, I I'm weird. So I, I like both. I just think it's interesting that you can have sports in the same quote unquote event, the winter Olympics that are rewarding completely different skill sets. And I, yeah. think, I mean, I think it's a reminder for all of us athletes and our clients, if you're a coach, like we are, you know, to that, you know, one athlete's goals do not, you know, necessarily or even closely match another athlete's goals and what's good for their, you know, their personal goals or if they compete in a sport, their specific sport. Um, you know, as you mentioned with the cross country skiing, I think there's, I think there's a relatability there uh, that's a bit more relatable for those of us that haven't been downhill skiing. Uh, you know, I have an idea of the effort that it takes to cross country ski. Um, you know, that long slog of going 18 miles over snow, like, you know how difficult that's going to be. And on the other hand, the the need to be absolutely perfect at 70 miles an hour going almost straight down. Yeah. You know, you mess up at all, you're out. It, you know, it's, it's a much different skill set and equally appreciative. Because I, if you put me at the top of that ski hill, I don't know there's any way you could force me to go down it. <laughs> like, I don't... Maybe crawl. I don't yeah, even know. Like, yeah. You know, I think, I feel like too, some of the sports are so extremely specific, right? Oh, yeah. I don't even know. Especially what, in Winter I mean, Olympics. There's a lot of skills. Yeah. Work. Like, I mean, 
think about the, the the guys that do the flips uh, you know, on the skis and the, like like what yeah they're probably they probably be good tumblers or something in gymnastics I, I just don't know what where the transfer is i mean they're probably great athletes in general but think about downhill skiing right what others like what a you, you just have to do that like <laughs> to get good at it you know what i'm saying <laughs> Obviously, you have what to train your, your legs. And what and, is your what is your semi specific but non sport training look like? Uh, yeah, that's what I mean. Like you have to live at a mountain. You have to live where there's snow all year round, and you have to train in that. You know, obviously, and training with lifting and all that kind of stuff too. But you you got to get out there and do that a lot, right? Just like ice skating, you have to do it a lot, right? Sports season, I feel like, is longer than than maybe even people might think with when it's so specific like that. Right, it's not like football where, you know, you might train. You, yeah, you're you're work using out. skills that are easily you know transferable. Like, okay, you yeah. run and you push things. Yeah, be and strong. You can, you like, can train, you know, the rest of the year and then play for four months. Right, that's your season in sport. Right, where this, I feel like you might be training year round as far as lifting, but you have to train your sport daily almost right because because it's so so high skill like imagine those guys doing that where they jump through big ramps and they do all those flips and turns on their skis and like you have to do that a lot and i'm sure they have dry training too where they, they're landing in foam pits and stuff like that obviously there's some sort of stuff like that um but yeah it, it, it's like the moto x guy like you have to go out and do that and then like you mess up <laughs> and you fall like you, that's what i'm always like what happens when you crash? Like, how long are you off after that? Like, concussions, like, separated shoulders, like, the, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's it's so specific, right? So that's what's fascinating to me about it, too. Like, it, it's really sport-specific in that sense. And you have to live in that – you have to live at a mountain somewhere, I, I feel like, most of the time to get that training in, especially with those kind of sports. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think – I agree. That, that it's, and it's a good point by you just – how specific it is. It's very much less carryover to let's say everyday sort of activities you would do in a quote unquote gym. Yeah. You know, whereas something like football, okay, you know, it's a lot of power, but you know, having the endurance to get through a game, you know, endurance to get through your workouts. So, you know, aerobic base, you know, but quick power, which you can do train many, many different ways. Yeah. Just running. Yeah. And you know, basic strength work and power work. And something like baseball, okay, like a little you know, more similar, specific. Yeah. Obviously, a bit more specific though, because you have to hit. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and or pitch. So you know, a bit more specific, but it's what do you need? You need a ball and a bat, mm-hmm. right? And you know, either a machine or someone else, right? If you're you can hit, you can hit in a cage. You can throw in a cage. You can. Yeah, you there's ball. you know, you, it's maybe much easier to have access to than I need a large yeah. mountain place with snow on it. No, and that's what I mean too. Like accessibility is huge in the winter sports, right? It, it's a, it's just a huge thing that you need. You need that accessibility. Well, and it's only going to increase, you know, that, that or the limits of that because of climate change, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it's only going to get more limited as we go forward, which is you, crazy. You see a lot of these these kids. They they live in like Park City, Utah, or you know, that's where they grow up. From the time they're yeah. three, they're on the mountain, right? And it's just how you grow up, where they grow up near an ice rink and they skate, right? So well, even we're like now, this, like a, we're now a full generation into like the Gen Xers, right? Because Gen, X, you know, they're kind of like all that stuff really started with you know kind of the '90s when we were younger, snowboarding you know, like, and stuff, yeah, yeah, when that sort of really became popular. And I mean, I forget when it got entered into the Olympics. This is Sean White's like fourth Olympics, so it was probably like he was probably in the first one, I think. So that must have been, yeah. 2018, 2014, like 2012 or 20, 2008, somewhere around yeah, there. This is his last one too, right? I think I saw that as well. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it hasn't been the Olympics that long, but we've been, now we're 20 years in since that stuff at least started to become popular with X games and winter X games. So you have yeah. an entire generation that's sort of grown up with it as a sort of quote, potentially a more normalized sport. Uh, you know, so I think you have athletes that have been kind of, like you said, they're probably training it most of their lives because they grew up on mountains and whatnot, which is cool to see. Yeah. Um, would you would think, so something I was thinking about is that, do we think it's, I don't know, fair is maybe not the right word. Does it seem, inter- I guess, interesting. I, I guess, would you do it this way, right? Where you have, so my, my I guess my, what I'm thinking about is some, some sports like 
the slalom, right? Michaela Schifrin, right? You, you, you crash on run one and you're done, right? Other sports that to me seem similarly potentially dangerous, like the flippies, the half pipe yeah. stuff. I, they don't, if you crash on one, one, you're like your first run, you're not out. Right. Yeah. So they, they take they your take best. Your, they'll take your best, best and get score. rid of your worst score. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I guess, is that does it seem weird that sports that i guess and maybe i'm wrong like again i don't do these sports um but that i would classify as being similar in terms of like risk and danger and sort of time t- like time duration have two extremely different penalty systems for messing up yeah i mean i, I see what you're saying like especially with the downhill how long does it take you said a minute and change to get down. Yeah, about well, it's about a minute. Like I know the the, yeah. the 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 super G last night was taking the men. I only I'm only saying this for the men because it was the men last night, and that's what I I happened to see the times it was around seventy to eighty seconds. It was taking them. Yeah. So what, what's it to hurt to have three runs and take your best, get rid of your worst, and then average out right, and then see who has the best the best time. But I, I think that's fair. You know. How, how long would yeah. that take? Would that take longer? Right. Yeah. I mean, it would take longer. I mean, yeah. I, I guess I don't have a strong opinion here because I don't know, you know, what's the history of it. I'm sure there's a good reason yeah. for it. But then like, you look to it, like it. you look at women's gymnastics and you fall and that's it. Right. Or the ice skating, you fall and that's pretty much it. Like you're, you're probably not going to get first. You might get second or third. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but I would say the, the difference is you could, you could still do, you could still play metal. Yeah, yeah still maybe place. Whereas with this, you're out. It's one, yeah, this is like one run and you're done, right? Either. So I don't, I don't know. Like I said, the the snowboarders do it, right? They go down the half pipe three times. They they take their highest score, basically, right? You get three chances. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. So I, I think you know, if I, I'm curious, if someone, you know, leave leave a note in the comments if you're a downhill skier, I guess. Uh, yeah. Why is foremost, it so? Yeah. Why is it so final, right? Yeah. Why don't you know, they do multiples? I, I am genuinely curious, and I, I mean, cause also you you would think like, okay, if, if we if we allow them a run, they they could drop. Like yes, I mean, I guess it changes the sport to some degree because it it means you don't have to be as precise. Yeah. Right, but to, I guess the, the sort of devil's argument to that for giving them a run they could drop would be that well, it would allow for it would allow for people to take more risks. Right, and maybe that's the reason they don't, is they don't want people yeah. pushing it to the point where they're going to so kill themselves. You can fly off the mountain, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, that is that is you know. I've seen some bad crashes just, in that sport. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you can really mess yourself up in that sport. I mean, I, the same is true in snowboarding, but I guess you can make the argument that the speeds are so much lower with like half pipe. Like it's really yeah. just how high do you go? That stuff's more at risk height and and fall than than speed and fall, but it's yeah. all pretty. <laughs> yeah, that, that other one's good, but I, I yeah, I mean, I, I guess the speeds are so much higher than like what you would the speed you would have for. I personally would rather be on the ground falling than falling from the sky, <laughs> but that's me. <laughs> yes, well, you and I would be entering willingly entering ourselves up into the sky if we didn't yeah. have to, probably. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Go up that half pipe. No, no, I'll watch down here and cheer. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> and be very impressed by all of you. Yes. Excellent job. You do that. You keep doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's just, a, yeah, I, you know, it, it is just interesting. I, I guess, again, I don't have a strong opinion one way or the other, but it was just a thought that yeah. popped in my head. I, I have not a strong opinion either, but I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be mad if they were like, Hey, you get three runs, take your best one. Right. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't be mad. Yeah, at that. And I, I guess I'm curious as to why that's, not like that, the case yeah. you know yeah maybe, maybe it's just a time issue maybe it's maybe it's a danger issue we don't want you know we're trying to pull back on risk and if you put tell people they're out if they go they crash well or they miss a gate well they're going to be more you know cautious coming down i mean I, that that could be a very good reason i'd be like oh that makes sense yeah so yeah i don't know good question cool. though. um all right i guess we should talk about the super bowl briefly um yeah coming so up we have the super bowl coming up um, so he, here, all right. So here are my two questions. Are you a fan of the two week break between, 
uh, the last playoff game, last pre Super Bowl playoff game, and the Super Bowl. And then, as we all know, uh, the Super Bowl has an extended halftime show. Right? We may have mentioned this before, but do you approve of the extended halftime show? So those those are your two questions. So let me back up even before that. The Super Bowl used to end in January, right? <laughs> yes. It used to be in January. Then all of a sudden, mysteriously, it was, you know, because they added that extra bye week for everybody. Then it was in February. Now we're in week two of February. We see where this is going, right? Like, are we going to be in March eventually with the Super Bowl? Like, I feel like it's gotten extremely out of hand with how long the season is in a sport where it's hard to keep people healthy anyway, right? So that's my first kind of, not a gripe, but it's just weird to me. It used to be last week of January, Super Bowl, from the time I was able to watch TV until, you know, the last five or 10 years, I guess. Now it's creeped into February. Now it's now it's literally the second week in February, right? So the two-week break, the Pro Bowl is a comedy show at this point. So I don't know why we did have you, to have did that. Did you watch any of it? No, I, I, after probably about three or four years ago, I was like, this is terrible. I'm not watching this ever again. And I won't. I refuse to support that game. Just have a skills competition or something. Make it fun. Clearly, no one wants to hit each other. And I don't blame them. Right, they have to play the next no. year. It's an it's another game on your body. It's another chance for a concussion. It's another chance to tear your ACL. For, for what? A lot of money. Yeah. They're, have they're a skills competition. Do do that whole weekend. Have the guys do max bench presses, throw the ball as far as they can. Like that that stuff's awesome to me to watch. Have the have the speed, the you know, forty yard dash. Do all that kind of stuff. I'll watch that. I think that's great. Remember, they used to have the obstacle course. They would climb ropes and jump over to things. And, you know, I thought that was cool. So do we need a two week break? Maybe to put your best two teams on the, on the field, right. Where everybody's rested up a little bit. I get it. There's a lot of press. There's a lot of hype. There's a lot of stuff going around it. So I'm okay with a two week break, just not wearing it's ending in the middle of February. Right. So it, that's weird to me. So um, I just looked up the historical ahead. Super Bowl dates because yes. I was curious. So it started out actually in the first half of January. The first Super Bowl was January 15th. And up until about. Yeah, because they had an sh- even shorter season, I believe. It was like Super 14 Bowl years. 12, right? So up, up until Super Bowl 12, the latest date was the 17th. And most of them were between the 12th and the 15th. There yeah. was Super Bowl 11 was actually on the 9th of January. Okay. To give you an idea how early that ended. Then it sort of shifted to the, like in the January, like the 20s. Uh, so between tw- the twentieth and thirtieth, uh, up until uh, Super Bowl thirty six, which was February third. Uh, thirty seven was the twenty sixth, and then after that, they've all been in. What the what year was that? February. That was two. Th- the first one thirty uh, thirty five. Oh, sorry, thirty six. That was the first one in February. Was two thousand two. Okay. The next year it went to the January twenty sixth in two thousand three, and then since two thousand four, it's always been in February. Been in February, yeah. So I, I thought it was something like that. I knew all through the nineties, it was in the, in January. And then I didn't remember where the shift started, but you know, it's when they started with that bye week and all that kind of stuff, which I understand, you know, but then I'm like, just make the season 15 games. Right? But instead now we made it longer. Right. And it's, it's whatever, but yeah, and as far as the halftime, happened. what was that? Sorry. And then I know there's talk of them adding an 18th game too. So. Yeah. Which to me is just, so we've gone from the early to mid January to now mid to February, possible late February, which is just crazy to me. But uh, yeah, the halftime show, I mean, there's been some really cool halftime shows, right? So I, I'm a fan of it when there's some quality entertainment. Some years it's terrible. Um, I'm a big music guy, so I do have my opinions about music. But I think this lineup is great. Uh, I'm looking to enjoy it. I think it's going to be a good halftime show. Um, my favorite one ever was Prince. That was my favorite halftime show that I've ever seen. Uh, playing in the actual rain, playing Purple Rain. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, to me, it like depends on the the artist. But, yeah, I, I think, you know, it's okay. It's, a, it's you know, if halftime, I forget what halftime is normally, maybe 20 minutes 12 or minutes. 12 minutes. Yeah, 
now it's going to be like what 30 or something like that yeah yeah um, this is I'm okay probably with that. it's probably where i have the biggest gripe i actually the, the two week break i think to me the two week break is i agree with you it, it allows you to put the best two teams on the super you know in the super bowl the best, Re- best two yeah. versions of the teams you have rested and That's game cool. planning all that stuff can come together yeah so in case someone has like a you know there's some little minor injury Nick, that'll yeah. heal up if they get you can which, which, get off of it for a week which everyone does trust me everyone at the end of football yeah, season yeah. has something yeah exactly so i get it that i think it does kind of disrupt the flow like you know you're going you're like kind of building up with the playoffs yeah. and then all of a sudden you have like a weekend where you're like oh is, is football over well especially if you're, hot, if you're a hot you're yeah if you're a hot team right it could maybe take some momentum from you so i, I get that side of it too um but but i get why they do it and, okay I, i'll buy that argument the the halftime show it, this is the one that bothers me the most because it, to me it fundamentally alters what a football game is where it you is, have yeah. you know you have there's seven now 17 games plus potentially three playoff games coming into it. So you've got 20 games where we've told you, Hey, here are the rules of, of an yeah. NFL football game. You're playing four 15 minute quarters and there's a 12 minute break, right? Well, that 12 minute break has implications for recovery and, you know, momentum and all these other factors and, and halftime adjustments, stuff like that. Halftime adjustments, like how much time yeah. you have to change your game plans and implement those changes and now we're going to like basically triple it. Yeah. Right. And, and we've seen like everyone talks about the, when the Patriots came back against Atlanta, Atlanta blew the lead. Atlanta should have never blown that lead. But at the same time, I'm one of those people that I think if they would have had a regular halftime, Atlanta does not blow that lead. Yeah. Maybe that doesn't happen. Yeah. I, I don't think that happens because they would have kept their, they came out so flat in that second half. Like you can tell the air, like they just were sitting too long. Or it's um, like the Ravens, uh, remember Ravens 49ers game when the lights went out and then the whole game changed oh, yeah, yeah. after that, right? So something like that yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. So to me, it's just, it, it's it's like when people are like, I don't like when soccer goes to, pe- soccer here for us in the US, football elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, when it goes to penalty kicks, because it, it's a different, you're, you're, you're choosing the winner based on a different game. Like it's not the actual yeah. game you're using to decide the winner. I always said they and, should just take keep taking a guy off the field every minute until somebody actually scores. <laughs> yeah, well, kind of like how yeah. the NHL like a, does their, their... Yeah, like a hockey power player. Yeah, like something like that. Yeah, well, because NHL's over time, they go to three players now, don't they? They changed that like a year or two ago. I, yeah, I forget how it exactly is, but it's something like that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's you have fewer players out there now, so it's like, to make it like more likely you'll get a winner, I think. Yeah. Which which to me makes sense. It's still at least a version of the game. And Correct. Obviously, you can't do that in football, but... I just fundamentally like, I love the halftime shows too. Right. So it, it is a bit of a catch 22. Like, cause I do enjoy the halftime shows. Yeah. And you know, obviously there's some years that maybe I'm like, Oh, I didn't like that performance as much, but it might not be my just style of music that I tend to gravitate towards. Yeah. They're, they're trying to cater to a very broad audience year to year. So I get Which it. is and tough, but you know, it's a huge audience, right? So you're trying to. Oh yeah. Yeah. So no, ma- no matter who you pick, there'll be a loud and vocal portion of the, yeah, yeah. Base of the like this person stinks. That's that's right. me. I'm I'm one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you pick this person? Yeah, but yeah, I, no, I, I thought, it is a good lineup this year, so that it'll be fun. Yeah, this it year's is, lineup I really like. I, uh, do, uh, Eminem, Dr. Dre, Mary J. Blige, right? Snoop, Snoop. Yeah, so it'll be fun. Yeah. So it'll be good. Um, I really like the um, the Shakira J Lo. That was good. That was really actually, good. yeah, that, that was impressive. I like, um, I like I like Shakira's music a lot, and I like a few J Lo songs, and so I'm, they're both I'm not just a, very entertaining performers. Yeah, great. Perf- and that's what, you know, more than anything, you like to see a good performance, right? Um, I'm just not a huge country guy fan. So whenever, whenever there's a country yeah. act on, I'm like, eh. <laughs> but that's just me, you know? Um, so I, yeah, I think this year will be good. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, how- it'll be good. But also I can see like, if you're a person that does not like, you know, late nineties, early. Yeah. Australia, if you're not a late, yeah. Like, I mean, I grew up terrible. with that. Yeah. I grew up with that stuff. So like, obviously I'm going to love, and like Mary J. Blige, one of my favorite singers of all time. Like I think she's incredible. So I, I'm I'm excited to see you know that halftime show. But yeah. you know some people just might hate '90s hip hop, right? So <laughs> exactly, <laughs> which makes no sense to me. I'm like '80s pop, '90s hip hop. That's just what you listen to, and then '90s grunge <laughs> music. That's my life. Um, <laughs> so so it, it'll be fun though. I I do agree though. Like it does change the game, right? It does add an aspect that you haven't had all year right? and now you do have it. So it's, it is a little different. Um, but I, you know, it is a, it is a show, right? It is a, 
spectacle. It's entertainment. It's and there's a there's a football game too somewhere in there. Right? So who, yeah, who's your the way. Who, sorry who who's your pick? Who are you picking? I am picking. So I was thinking back and forth. My heart wants Cincy, and I've I've they led it led me correct on their comeback in the conference championship, um, but. I, I don't think their line can actually block that well. And especially against the Rams defensive line. I think elite. Joe Burrow is yeah. going to be running for his life all game long and just getting smashed. And, and I hate it. I hope he's not injured and I hope I'm wrong. But because of that, I, I just don't think Cincinnati's line has not been playing well in the postseason. Um, and the Rams, they kind of disappeared last game, but before that they were, their line was just dominant. Dominating. Yeah. So I am going to pick the Rams on the strength of their defensive line and pressuring Joe Cool. Yeah. It kills me to so, say that, but that's what I'm picking. I, I mean, I'm in 100% agreement. Every year I watch the Super Bowl, the team that wins the front line battle usually wins the game, right? So if you went up front, I mean, the Patriots have done it forever. We look at last year, Tampa Bay won because of their line play. They beat up Patrick Mahomes. Right, they were all over him. It was like he had no line, um, and to me, they have the elite defensive line, and I think, I think that's going to be the problem for Cincinnati. Uh, but it's also a case too where like he's so young, he he just doesn't get caught up in the moment at all, and just does something special. It wouldn't surprise me, right? Um, but I, I got to go Rams here. Hopefully, it's a. I just like good games in the Super Bowl, like, even if my team's in it. Like, even if they lose, like, I just want to see a good game. I hate when Super Bowls are just, like, duds. The game's terrible. Like, when my team lost to Seattle by, like, 170 points the one year. Uh, the opening snap was a fumble over Peyton Manning's head. I was like, well, this game's over. Because Seattle had the best defense in the league, right? Again, dominating the defensive front. So, yeah, I think Rams are the favorite. I, I think – you have to pick them as a favorite. They have more veterans. They have a, a better defensive line. And offensively, they have just as many weapons, if not more. A lot of guys from LSU are going to be on the field with Odell and Chase and Joe. and right? It's a lot of LSU guys out there. Um, but, yeah, just, just hoping for a good game. Hey, maybe it'll be an exciting game. Maybe Joe pulls off something crazy, and even if they lose, I it's still so. a good game. Yeah, that's all yeah, I wish I, for. I will be happy if we come on next week and – I get to say, well, I was wrong with my pick. So, yeah. so I guess I'm, 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 I would like to see Cincy win. I don't have super strong feelings that way. I, I, I hope Burrow plays really well, no matter what. You know, does the best he can given whatever situation he's faced with. And to me too, yeah, like I, it, it would be a good story for Stafford, right? He, he, he's oh, yeah. was on Detroit for so long, right? Even uh, Odell, like struggling where he was in Cleveland, and then you know. Gets to another team, uh, you know, it would be a cool story too. You like to see guys like succeed after struggling for a little while. Um, yeah, again, I, I like both. I like both teams, so I'm not really, you know. Yeah. Pulling. If you told me to pick who I'm pulling for, probably Cincy, but I don't really, you know, whatever team wins is a good story. Like, it, it, I think from sort of a marketing standpoint, you have good story. You know, I'm sure the media good storylines because they have good stories yes. either way. You know, yeah, since he's a smaller market, but because they haven't been there in so long, you know, yeah. never, like they're, they've kind of been the underdogs, so like probably half the country's pulling for them anyway. The Rams haven't been there in a while either, so. Yeah, but, you know, but that's also L.A., and so yeah. you got it's a big market. You know, so they kind of, no matter who wins, I mean, I think. It's a win. NFL yeah. will be happy. NFL wins happy. either way. <laughs> and yeah. Like they usually do. Yes, they, so. they're like Vegas. They always win. <laughs> Speaking of this, quick 30-second thoughts. Um, since we saw Alvin Kamara get arrested for beating a man with his entourage. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, he'll be going to jail, I believe, and rightfully so, it seems, based on the allegations and video evidence that is apparently real. Yeah. When this happens, right, obviously this happens, seems to happen a lot in, in Vegas, and I saw a Deadspin article being like, the NFL should have never put a team in Vegas. Yeah. I think that's a cop-out, right? Like, I think – people need to be responsible for their own actions. Like, yeah. like you can get in trouble in any city. Like, yes, it's going to be fewer opportunities in say Cleveland to get in trouble than maybe Vegas, but is Vegas really any worse than the trouble you can get into in LA or no. New York? Like, I don't no. feel like it's really any less. I feel like it's worse in New York or LA. 
there's more places. There's more. I, I don't know. I mean, Vegas is specifically to party, right? I get it. I live near Atlantic City. People go there to party, right? But it still doesn't excuse terrible behavior, right? Like it, where I live, there's zero places to get in trouble, but some people still get in trouble, right? It's just it, it, if you look for it and yet you, you know you're not acting right, you're gonna find trouble, and uh, it's it's it sucks to see, right? Such a talented guy, right? And uh, getting caught up in that situation, and you know maybe maybe if you just don't go out that night, it doesn't happen, right? Or maybe if you chill or you know what I mean? So it's tough to see that. You never want to see it. And you feel bad for the, the victim and all that. You know, it's just it's just a bad situation all the way around. Whatever led up to it happened. And, you know, it, usually alcohol involved and bad decisions are being made. And, yeah, it's it's not good. It's It sucks to see. All right, uh, so I know that was kind of a bummer note to end on. Um, That's all right. But we we've got more Winter Olympics this week. We'll probably, I, I'm sure we'll get into some more. Snow, maybe half pipe starts this week. I would assume. Yeah, uh, I'll be I'll be so. checking the. Well, it's on that NBC channel again, right? Yeah, it's all NBC NBC yeah. sort of affiliated networks. NBC Sports. NBC yeah, I, I'm gonna check tonight and see what's on and flip through and there check some stuff out. So. All right. If you're watching, like, subscribe below. Uh, go follow us on Instagram at the various links and you know, follow CHP on Instagram. If you're interested in coaching, the link is below. We've kind of moved over to a new site, so uh, the link's changed, but find it below. All right, everyone. We will see you next week. Peace see ya. out.